Today we're going to be learning about how to make an amoeba eat and run game. Similar to this one I made right here. So if we press the green flag, uh, you can see that uh, there's just, just this green amoeba. And we have to try and get the red food. And if, if we get a red food, then it increases the score by one. But we also have to try to escape this uh, orange bad guy. And if he catches us... We lose, and it's game over. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, first make a new project. Then delete the cat. Then uh, you have to paint a new sprite. And this sprite is going to be a green ball, or a green amoeba. Hold shift to turn into a perfect circle, get rid of the outline. And there we go, we have a nice little green amoeba. Now duplicate this sprite and go to the fill and fill it to be a nice red color. This is going to be the food. And then duplicate that costume again and uh, go to orange and fill that color in with orange. So in total you should have a green amoeba, a red food, and a orange bad guy. All right, next we'll need two backdrops. Get one that's filled with a color such as blue. I'm gonna make this backdrop blue, but you can make it any backdrop color you want. Then duplicate that background, and this is going to be the game over backdrop. So just uh, choose the font you want. I'm gonna choose pixel, and write the words game over. Okay. Alright, now let's code. We get out a when go clicked block and then a forever loop. Then we get out a go to, but instead of being a standard X and Y coordinates, they're going to be the mouse X and the mouse Y. This means that they'll follow, that the green sprite is going to follow uh, wherever the mouse pointer goes. So if we test it out, it works. The green amoeba follows wherever our mouse goes. Next, get out an if statement and a touching color block. Then, press this little button at the bottom and touch the red food right there. Now, in the then, there's something a bit tricky. If we go to the orange tab, you can see two things, variables and lists. We're not going to be dealing with lists in this tutorials, but variables are going to show up a lot. What a variable is, basically, is it's a container for storing information. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to delete the my variable variable, and we're going to make a new one called score. Okay, at the start, we have to put set score to zero, which is a classic restart code. In the then of the if statement, we put change score by one. So essentially, it should change our score by one every time we touch the red food. Also put a show block at the very start. I'll tell you why in a minute. And put a when go clicked and a show to all of the sprites. Or just copy this, this script to all of the sprites there is. And the way we can do that is just drag this code to the other two sprites. Okay, in the food, put a forever loop and then an if statement. Then put a touching color and uh, make it so that it touches that little green color, the main amoeba. Afterwards, in the then, put a hide block, uh, a go to random position block in motion and then a show block so essentially what it should do is uh every time it, the green amoeba touches it it should hide go to a new location and then show again so let's just move this out of the way and let's test it out now okay and as you can see the score increases by one and the amoeba just and, uh, sorry, the food just moves into any old random location. 
In fact, uh, while we're at it, why don't we just increase the size of this to 150? Actually, no, that's a bit too big. What about 110? That seems good enough. And let's decrease the size of this to 75 or 65. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And let's increase the size of this to 120. Not really uh, necessary, but uh, it's just it just makes the game look better. All right, now let's get the evil guy to try and capture the amoeba. First, get out a go-to block and put in the coordinates to where you want it. In, in this case, I want it to go over there. Then get out a forever loop and uh, get out a point towards, uh, point towards, and uh, say sprite one. So it's always gonna be pointing towards sprite one. Then put in move two steps. And uh, just to make the game much more trickier, I'm going to uh, after after the uh, forever loop. I'm going to put an if then statement saying if the score, and then we go to operators, get out a uh, greater than yeah greater than if score is greater than forty nine. Actually, let's do if score is greater than fifty. If score is greater than fifty, then point to. Then a uh, point towards sprite one. We're gonna get a point towards sprite one. It's like so. It's still gonna point to sprite one. Only this time it's gonna move. Uh, let's do five steps. Uh, maybe that's a bit too fast. How so about four steps? Okay. Then we get out another if, and then we say if touching color green. Then broadcast a message. Well, first of all, what is broadcasting in Scratch? Broadcasting is basically where you send a message and all the other sprites are prepared. So that when they receive it, then they'll do what it says. So broadcast. So when we go to events, we have this broadcast right here. We're going to broadcast a new message called Game Over. Then you go back to Sprite 1 and say, when I receive game, or game over, then hide. This is why we put the show in there. Because when, when we click the green flag, it's if we don't put that show, then it's, it's not going to show up. It's going to stay hidden. So we, we need to make sure we have that show right here. Oh, and then copy the script, the game, the game over script, to all other sprites. Including this sprite. Alright, then go to the backdrops and say, uh, when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to backdrop 1. But when I receive game over, switch backdrop to backdrop 2. Okay, and uh, after that we need to stop all scripts. Okay, let's test it out now. Uh, it, the green, sh the green uh, amoeba should follow wherever your mouse pointer goes, and uh, the orange should follow the green. And if the orange gets the green, then it should display a game over message. Okay, that's it for another tutorial. Tune in next time, where we'll be learning about more advanced stuff. But yeah, I hope you found this. Uh, educational and instructive, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.